You know, these days, everybody likes to make disclaimers. They say, you know, I'm on this board. I serve with this group. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. Well, I have a disclaimer. And it is that I am not politically correct. So. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm mean or try to insult people, because I don't. I go out of my way not to do that. But I also found out that it's not worth tying yourself into a little pretzel so that you don't offend anybody, because today people are offended so easily. Have you noticed that? It's just crazy. And... Uh, you know, when I was a kid, they had a saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt. I don't think the kids know that anymore. They don't teach that to them anymore. They say, if somebody says something to you, go to your safe space. You know, <laughs> the, the, the whole thing has changed. But uh, we can't let it change too much because freedom of speech is such an important part of the American dream. And... Have you noticed that America is the only country that has a dream? There's no French dream. There's no Portuguese dream, no Nigerian dream, no Canadian dream. The Canadians thought they had one until recently, but we're the only ones. <laughs> we're, we're the only ones who actually have a dream, that shiny city on the hill. And how many people are trying to denigrate our country and say what a horrible place it is? What do they know? I mean, my wife and I have been to 68 different countries. We've lived overseas. And I can guarantee you that there is no place that compares with our country. It is the best place in the world. And it's our job to maintain that dream for others. You know, a lot of people have given up on the dream. They say, I just want to survive. Uh, because of all the things that are going on in our country right now. It's the same country, the same people, but we have had injected into our midst some who want to fundamentally change our country. And that is a big, big issue. But my American dream was to be a doctor. It was the only thing that interested me as a little kid. I loved anything that had to do with medicine. Dr. Kildare, Dr. Casey, man. <laughs> I was all over that stuff. And I even liked going to the doctor's office. I mean, I would gladly have a shot just so I could smell the alcohol swamp. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not a COVID shot. <laughs> But obviously, if you're going to be a doctor, you got to go to medical school. And I was a terrible student. I was the worst student you could imagine. Everybody called me horrible names. They teased me all the time. I admired the smart kids, though. And there was one kid, his name was Steve. He was the smartest kid in the class, and he wanted to make sure you knew that. After a test, he'd come up to you and hold his A in your face and say, let me see yours, let me see yours. You want to let them see it all right. But, uh, <laughs> but you'd get into trouble for that. But, you know, my mother was such an amazing person. She believed in me when nobody else did. And she was always saying, Benjamin, you're much too smart to bring home grades like this. I brought them home anyway, but she was always saying that. <laughs> you know? And, you know, she was encouraging. She had less than a third grade education herself. And she prayed to God for wisdom because she wanted us to have a different life. And she knew that it was surrounding education because the homes that she cleaned as a domestic, they had a lot of books. And she noticed that they read a lot of books. They didn't watch a lot of TV. So she came home and imposed that on me and my brother. <laughs> and we were not happy campers. I mean, in today's world, we would have called social services. <laughs> they probably would have led her way in handcuffs, you know. But we had to read the books. And I didn't enjoy that at all, at first. 
But after a while, I actually began to enjoy reading those books. Starting reading about entrepreneurs and innovators and explorers and surgeons and scientists. And as I read their stories, it became very clear to me that the person who has the most to do with what happens to you is you. It's not somebody else. It's not some circumstance. I started listening, stop listening to all of those people who were saying, you can't do it. The situation is difficult for someone like yourself. There are too many obstacles. And uh, also my mother, my mother was an incredible person. She never made excuses, no matter what was going on. And she never accepted excuses from us. And if we ever had an excuse, the very next thing out of her mouth was a poem called Yourself to Blame. And we didn't want to hear that poem. <laughs> so we stopped making excuses. <laughs> I think that was a very cool thing. But I got to the place where I, I was just reading. If I had five minutes, I was reading a book. And in the space of a year and a half, I went from the bottom of the class to the top of the class, much to the consternation of all those people who teased me and called me dummy. And I remember going up to Steve <laughs> after a test, and I said, Steve, how'd you do in the test? And he poked out his chest. He said, ah, I got a 91. I said, well, gee, that's too bad. Ah, I got a 100. <laughs> And I said, next time, if you need help, let me know. <laughs> now, I was probably a little obnoxious, but it sure felt good to say that that's turkey. But, but you know what? I had the exact same brain when I was at the bottom of the class that I had at the top of the class. What does that tell you about potential? We are made in the image of God. And God is no dummy. He gave us these amazing brains that remember everything you've ever seen, everything you've ever heard, can process more than 2 million bits of information in one second. The human brain is the most amazing thing in the universe. And yet, have you noticed how there are forces in our society today that are trying to take advantage of that developing human brain. They're trying to take advantage of our children. You know, the brain develops incredibly rapidly after conception. Hundreds of thousands of neurons every single day. And the brain continues to develop into the mid to late 20s. So... That's the reason that someone who's 15 years old doesn't get a driver's license. They don't quite process things the way that a fully mature individual does. The more mature they get, obviously, the better they process things. But can you imagine taking advantage of grade school children whose brains haven't developed? who are very suggestible and very curious, and then you go up to them and tell them you may not be a girl or a boy, and it has a much bigger impact on them than it would on somebody who has a mature brain. That's the very reason that God gave children parents to protect them. <laughs> 